Okay, my beautiful friends, sit back and relax because, as usual, we have to talk. We do. We have to talk. And it's going to be beautiful and lovely. It's perfect. It always is, no matter what. Anyway, post-market wrap-up on this Thursday, October 6th, 2022. Um, let me just put a few things together for you here. Um, the bad economic news just doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop round after round after round after round of it. But there's a phenomenon occurring. It's called learned helplessness. Yes, people are getting numb to the situation here. And again, that's it's part of what's happening and what it's meant to do. Uh, people generally tend to fall into these kinds of states. I mean, look it up for yourself. I'm not making this up. When people feel like there's no future, like things are just going to continue to get worse, instead of taking action, they, they, they just sit back and they allow the situation to consume them um, and erase them. That's really what's going on here. Okay. Um, but there's something else going on too. And I want to read this to you. Now, as all of you are well aware of, I was probably and maybe still am the first guy to ever start to talk about the issues here in the debt market from many, many years ago. How at one point all of this is just going to melt down. How the debt bubble is the biggest threat to humankind, human life on the planet. Uh, all the distractions, distortions, the look here's the don't look there. But we heard something today, and this was reported on Bloomberg, so I want you to look this up for yourself here. So Bloomberg is saying this, treasury liquidity problem, the current treasury liquidity problem, okay? What do we know is the problem? <laughs> well, liquidity is drying up. It's drying up rapidly, and as I explained yesterday, I don't think it's over with. Look, the action of central banks here to keep the system liquid, or at least give the illusion of it via like the Federal Reserve's reverse repo program here, faking the system, trying to convince the system that there's more li liquidity in it here. Um, it's, 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 it's a big problem. In fact, this is what Bloomberg said. Like I said, like I was going to tell you, treasury li liquidity problem is the Federal Reserve's biggest nightmare. That's their words. Not, not me. But let me explain this to you. It's not just the Federal Reserve's biggest nightmare. It's actually not the nightmare of any central bank. Central banks are, again, they're faking this liquidity issue. They understand the situation. They know what's going on here. Central banks are leading us down a, 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 a predetermined pathway to a financial meltdown on a global scale bigger than anyone can possibly imagine. It's nothing like this has ever happened before and will probably ever happen again. Central banks, this isn't their biggest nightmare, like Bloomberg is saying. Oh, Federal Reserve's biggest nightmare is liquidity issue in the debt market. Okay, duh. Um, you know, they must follow my work because I've been talking about this forever. Okay, here's the deal. Is you got central banks who are doing this on purpose, leading us down that pathway I just alluded to, to to a, a destruction of the financial system in its current state to just issue in a new one here. But what I'm trying to get to, if you were to look at the 10-year yield today, it's creeping higher, 3.82, up from 3.76 this morning. Okay, not nothing dramatic, but creeping higher nonetheless. You got the U.S. dollar, which continues this uh, freak show, you know, fear reaction, and that's what it is. Look, you know this. Whenever you see the relative strength of the dollar just kick higher like this, over 1% today, that's a big move, okay? When you see that, it means the market is smelling something. The market is feeling fearful. It's really afraid. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it's what it is. So you get that, and what happens is pressure on the stock market. Okay, stocks did sell off today. Nothing dramatic, but lower nonetheless. But the issue here is at its at its core, a liquidity problem with regard to the global debt market. It's not just the Federal Reserve's issue. It's not their issue at all. It's our issue. They, central banks collectively, are pushing the world in that direction, pushing the entire population in that direction. 
deliberately going out of their way to convince people that the problem with inflation is the fact that they're trying to tell us, which is not true at all, that it's a rate issue. It is not a rate issue. If you follow this blog, you know exactly what the problem is. It's a currency free fall. And who who controls the monetary system, the financial system of the world? Who's responsible for that? Well, it's not me. It's not you. It's not our brain dead, vomitous, disgusting, putrid, stinking, stenching, whatever the heck they are, policy leaders, politicians. It's none of those. It's the central banks collectively who run the financial system. You know that. So if we're in a currency free fall, which you will not hear about. When was the last time? Let's just reflect on that for a moment. When was the last time you heard a single mainstream media outlet equate inflation and a currency free fall? Or the reduction in the purchasing power of the currency? You've probably never heard it before. You won't hear it moving down the line. They're going to sit there and lie to you which they do every single day, even today, turn on Bloomberg, Fox Business, CNBC, they're all telling you the same thing. It's a rate problem. The central banks are going to raise rates. Yes, yes, yes. The joke is on you. You see, they think you're an idiot. They think you and me are idiots. And oh, yes, it's it's definitely, it's a rate problem. And then what are they doing? They're floating out Fed creature over here. This this thing uh, on any of these channels to try to convince you that that is the problem. Fed, Fed Bostic, oh yeah, oh, the Fed's not going to pivot. Uh, they're already buying the debt. We know it. Look, let me explain this to you, in case you don't know. How does the Fed keep rates low? They don't just say it. They can't just say, hey, we're going to keep rates low. They have to do it. They have to get into the market. They have no magic. There's no magical powers behind any central bank, for that matter. they got to create epic sums of cash out of thin air and buy the debt and or sell it to keep the, the, the debt market somewhat stable now. Look, I don't see it yet. And I, I alluded to this like a day or two ago. I still believe we have instability here in the debt market. And I think the stock market is reflecting that. Despite what the Bank of England might have just done, central banks, you know, trying at least to stabilize the debt market. It's, it's, it's a monumental problem on an unprecedented scale. And the silence is deafening, although it is getting some traction. I mean, like, you know, Bloomberg with this headline, Treasury liquidity problem is the Federal Reserve's biggest nightmare. No, it's your biggest nightmare and my biggest nightmare. It's not central banks. They know exactly what they're doing. Look, we are living in a side effect as to what central banks have put into action a long time ago. Okay, what we're living in now is, is the delayed reaction of what they're doing, what they have done, the pathway that they've set us all on, set the world on. You know, seriously, I don't know when people are going to wake up to realize that central banks are, are the enemy bar none. They're, they're, they're the enemy of the highest possible order. And, you know, people just walk through time and space and have no clue. You do. I do. Uh, understanding the situation. Now, let me move forward here. So, the World Trade Organization is warning. There's a warning here, okay? Warning that global tr the global trade outlook could deteriorate further. Can I please get a duh? Look, do they think we're stupid as well? This is all being driven by design. A collapse of the global economy here. And central banks could not be happier about it. They're laughing at us. They're laughing at all of us, people. I want you to realize that. It's so pathetic. Anyway, um, we got a, another warning, if you want to call it that, from the IMF, you know, the International Mafia Fund. Central banks, listen to this. Central banks must, con must continue to raise rates despite whatever may happen, despite rising risk against it. Really? So they must raise rates. Why? Uh, because you see, the IMF can't also allow you to understand that it's not a rate problem. So they have to give you this warning here. Oh, central banks must continue to raise rates because they're so serious about combating inflation. So let's see. Months and months and months, these central banks have been raising rates. And inflation is going higher and higher and higher. When is someone around here going to wake up besides you and I and say, hey, it ain't working, nor is it meant to work? And the funny thing, the funny thing about all this, 
or pathetic thing about it, depending on your perspective, is you. And I knew it wouldn't work since its inception. Go to my old videos. I said, it's not going to work. It's not going to do anything because it's not a rate issue. It's a currency problem. But you, but we're not supposed to know that because they think we're stupid. And guess what? We're not freaking stupid. Unbelievable. Um, so here's, a, here's something else I want you to pay attention to. So the Biden administration, I want, I want to hear what you have to say on this. The Biden administration is now spending $290 million, that's a relatively small amount of cash, on anti-radiation drugs for use in an upcoming emergency. Oh, an upcoming emergency. So they're telling us that there's going to be some kind of new, they want to scare the living shit out of people is what they're really doing here, okay? Uh, come on, people. And this is just another mechanism to pull cash from the future. We don't have this $290 million. We don't have it. Where does it come from? I'm going to give you one guess. It's called the Federal Reserve. Absolutely. Now, um, this is something else I want to bring to your attention. I'm almost done here. Despite a weakening economy and, and, and you know, the abysmal economic news here, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm laughing. U.S. GDP just got an upgrade in the third quarter to possibly a 2.7%. Um, how about it's going to be negative? Okay, another negative quarter as our economy free falls along with the rest of the world, but you're not supposed to know that either. Anyway, look, so the issue here of liquidity in the debt market is getting some traction. And, you know, I believe it, it has to do with you and I as well. Look, this channel isn't small. A lot of people are starting to pay attention to this stuff that I've been screaming from rooftops about for a very long time. So, I don't know, maybe they have to float these stories out once in a while. Yes, this is the biggest issue, the greatest threat facing the world right now is an implosion in the debt market. It is the biggest threat. There's nothing that comes close to it, like a threat to human life. Yet, a threat to human existence, our lifestyle, and everything else. But no, it's, it, it's all the, uh, the drugs here, $290 million worth of anti-radiation drugs from our illustrious imbecile president who can't possibly walk and chew gum at the same time. But I think we all know that already. But look, it's all a mechanism here. Keep people afraid. Make them fear one thing and you can control their minds. Now the whole thing's gonna be nuclear. Nuclear war. Oh, we must fund the war over there. Oh, we have to spend unlimited amounts, billions, hundreds of billions, maybe even trillions because you know it's a nuclear threat now and you have to back it because if you don't, you're not a patriot. You have to bankrupt the country. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're already bankrupt. We're the largest debtor nation in the world. The United States is the laughing stock of the world. The largest debtor nation in the history of the world. I want you to think about these things, people. I really want you to ponder uh, about all this. Anyway, going back to the market. So stocks finished negative. I already explained to you what's going on with the dollar. 10-year yield. Gold and silver catching a bid today. Crude oil getting a bit higher. Bitcoin still around 20 grand. That's the story. All that's lovely and fun to talk about. But the bigger deal here is, is again, this... this issue of liquidity in the debt market. Let's see where this is going to go, people. Let's keep our eyes on this, and I will keep you ahead of the curve, as I always at least try to do to the best of my ability. This guy here, right here, loves you a lot. I will see all of you tomorrow morning. Have a great evening, and well, that's it.